Welcome to part 3 of Lead Acid Batteries. Today we'll discuss battery capacity. Looking at the battery in my car, you find lots of different numbers on it. Most people know about the CCA, cold cranking amps, because this is how most batteries are advertised. The bigger the number, the better. But if bigger numbers are better, what's this 875 over here? Well, CA stands for cranking amps. We'll definitely need to discuss the difference between those two. And what about when you're looking at a battery spec sheet? You see row after row of numbers. And some spec sheets even have many rows of minutes. I think it'd be helpful to cover all of this as well. So, let's get started. The first rule, every measurement we're going to be talking about was done on a brand new battery that was fully charged. And since batteries lose capacity as they age, the number shown will be the best the battery ever will be. Let's start out by assigning real names to all these acronyms. CCA is cold cranking amps. If you see CCP, that's cold cranking power. MCA, marine cranking amps. CA, cranking amps. HCA, hot cranking amps. RC, reserve capacity. PC, politically correct. Oops, I mean peak capacity. RCM, reserve capacity minutes. AH, amp hours. And finally, just plain C, charge rate. Now that's an awful lot of information. Let's simplify it. Some of these acronyms are just different words describing exactly the same measurement. For example, CCA and CCP, pretty much the same thing. Marine cranking amps versus cranking amps, same measurement. And these three as well are all identical. See, much simpler. We just dropped from 10 measurements down to 6, almost in half. But what exactly are we measuring? The test for cold cranking amps is done at 0 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where we get the word cold from. For 30 seconds, current is removed from the battery at the highest rate possible while not allowing the battery terminals to drop below 7.2 volts. Let's try a simpler approach. At 0 degrees Fahrenheit, for 30 seconds they drew maximum current out of the battery without destroying the battery. Marine cranking amps is the same test with one difference. Logic dictates that you don't want to use your boat when the temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Boats don't move so well through ice. So this test is run at 32 degrees Fahrenheit instead of zero. You'll notice cranking amps is also run at 32 degrees. So, you remember that confusing label on my car battery? We now know I'll get 700 amps at zero degrees Fahrenheit and 875 amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Or stated differently, CCA is when it's mounted in my automobile, CA when it's mounted in my boat. Moving on, we have HCA for hot cranking amps. This is the same test as the previous two, only it's done at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll find the amperage output at this rating is much higher than the other two. This is due to the fact that at higher temperatures, the battery puts out more current. But a drawback is that the battery will die much quicker. Manufacturers that want to make their batteries look better than others will often be seen using this rating. So far, everything we've looked at up to this point is designed to give you maximum current in the shortest period of time primarily used for starting engines. Okay, moving on, let's look at reserve capacity minutes. This test is run at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They pull a constant 25 amps out of the battery. When the battery terminals drop to 10.5 volts, it's effectively dead, and they stop the test. The measurement is given to you in minutes. As an example, if RCM is 87 minutes, that's how long the battery lasted while pulling 25 amps out of it. Now, why would I care? Let's say you're driving along and your charging system fails. Well, now the battery's going to be providing all the power for the car. You figure the average vehicle requires 25 amps per minute to move, so in 87 minutes, your car will stop moving. And you start walking. That's why I care. Now that we have this extra information, we can go back to this confusing spec sheet that we were looking at earlier. We just talked about this column right here. Looking at the battery on the top row, we now know that if we're pulling 25 amps out of this battery, it'll last for 355 minutes. The next column tells you how long it'll last if you're pulling 56 amps. And finally, 75 amps. Let me pause a moment to explain an odd little quirk about batteries. As we just saw, 25 amps will give you 355 minutes. 75 amps will give you 93 minutes. Looking at the value relationships, 75 amps is three times bigger than 25 amps. So using linear mathematics, I would expect my battery only to last one-third as long. Let's do some mathematics and check my assumption. 
One third of 355 gives us 118 minutes. What this actually means is that I was wrong about the assumption that the times and the amperages are related to each other. Here's why. The faster you drain a battery, the fewer amps that battery will be able to give you. Let's compare this to an analogy. 25 amps is a person just jogging down the street. We'll say at that pace they can make it 5 miles. Well then 75 amps would be the equivalent of sprinting. Well that person will tire out much more quickly. Probably only make it 3 miles. So pushing either a battery or a person too hard means that neither one will be able to meet its full potential. For you math wizards, there's actually a formula that allows you to calculate this time versus current issue. But don't worry, we're not going to cover that in this video. Moving back to our capacity chart, our next contestant is amp hours. For you people interested in deep cycle applications, such as inverters, campers, motorhomes, etc., this is what you're looking for. This test is run at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. A steady trickle of current is pulled out of the battery at a rate which will allow the battery to last 20 hours before it dies at 10.5 volts. The total number of amps that battery provided is then listed as your amp hours. Back on your spec sheet, you'll find that information right here. Please notice that it actually says 20 hour rate. This is very important. As you'll remember, the speed at which we drain that battery defines how many amps we will get out of that battery. So as this table shows, if we drain the battery in one hour, we'll only get 107 amps. But if we drain it at a 100 hour rate, this battery will give us 206 amps. Oh, if amp hours is stated without the hour rate, it's assumed to be 20. Wow, we've covered a lot of stuff. My brain hurts. Take a little break, grab a cup of tea. Okay, let's get back to it. What does this amp hour rating mean to us? Let's say I want to hook an inverter that pulls 10 amps up to this 100 amp hour battery. The question is, will I get 10 hours of use out of that battery? Since we all hate quizzes, I'll just tell you the answer. No, you won't get 10 hours of use. If you'll remember from our previous conversation, that 100 amps is based on a predefined current draw from the battery. So to answer our question, we have to figure out how much current they pulled out of that battery during their test. This is actually some pretty easy math. Simply divide the total battery's amp hours by the amp hour rate, in this case, 20 hours. And we find out they were pulling 5 amps per hour out during this test. So since the current draw is twice the rated value of the battery, I'd say we're going to get considerably less than 10 hours out of this battery. There's one more piece of information you should be aware of. If the battery actually gives up 100 amps, remember that you've reached the dead battery state. You can recharge it, but each time you do that, it causes severe damage inside the battery. So to properly use this battery, you need to do what's called shallow cycling. I'll cover that in another video. Our last measurement we'll talk about is C for charge rate. When you see the letter C, it's usually preceded by a number. If there's no number in front of it, it's assumed to be a 1. What 1C tells us is, you've either charged or discharged 100% of the capacity of that battery in one hour. 2C means you did it in two hours. 0.5C is half an hour, and etc. Here's the problem. You don't normally charge or discharge a lead-acid battery in one hour. It's not designed for it, so it's not normal to use the term C when describing lead-acid batteries. However, while doing my research, occasionally I have seen this terminology printed on a battery. So let's decode it. 100 amp hours is the total capacity of the battery, and this is the testing method they use to find that information. C, or 1C, means they withdrew 100% of the capacity of the battery. And this is the time in hours that it took them to do it. If you want to figure out the rate at which they pulled the current out of the battery, that's some easy math. Rate is equal to 1C divided by the hours. 100 divided by 20 is 5 amps per hour. Well, in the last 9 minutes we've covered an awful lot of material. We've covered the outputs of a battery under a predetermined specific set of circumstances, all of which are listed in the testing methods that we've discussed. But as I hinted at in this video, batteries are very finicky. So in my next video, part 4, I'll explain the conditions as to why these battery ratings can change dramatically according to how you use the battery. Hey, thanks for watching.